One of the world's leaders in the field of gluten research is Italian-born professor Alessio Fasano. He's a paediatric gastroenterologist at Massachusetts General Hospital in the U.S. Dr. Alessio Fasano. Dr. Fasano is a world-renowned pediatric gastroenterologist. Uh, my name is Alessio Fasano. I'm the director of the Center for Theater Research at the Massachusetts General Hospital for Children's in Boston. We didn't know the details of why gluten is toxic until the recent past, when scientists worldwide start to really look at this undigestible fragment of gluten. And to our major surprise, gluten is perceived by our immune system as a component of a bacterium or a virus and unleash the same weaponry that we use when we're under attack by an infection. As gluten enters the small intestine, it's recognized as foreign and an immune reaction causes local inflammation in the gut. The enemies to which the immune system react to that can eventually create this collateral damage that we call inflammation are proteins. And only proteins, they are undigested, or only partially digested, can instigate an immune response. The pieces that are undigested, not only under normal circumstances they cannot come in, but if they do, are perceived as enemies, because our substances are not belong to our body, and the immune system will react against them. It's also important to um, understand that, you know, instigation of an immune response, in other words, when the immune system sees an enemy and starts to really fight and create this collateral damage that we call inflammation, it's mainly instigated by proteins or piece of proteins. But this, of all the stuff that surround us, the immune system perceives enemies, stuff that don't belong to us, uh, only for proteins. No fat, no sugars are the proteins that instigate the immune response that can make you sick. The enemies that the immune system see and eventually fights are proteins, what we call non-self-antigens. So when you have undigested peptides, this can create problems. By mistake of evolution, gluten is interpreted by the immune system as a bacterium. So in other words, an invader that can really kill us. The fact that gluten cannot be completely digested and will have the capability to try through these two pieces here in blue to make the intestine leakier, it's a great instigator of inflammation. That's what it is. And, and again, it will be seen by this immune system as an invader that can create danger. And the immune system goes all in to get rid of it. The more we study this molecule, the more we realize that mistakenly, because we didn't evolve with this, this is perceived as a component of microorganism. It's like that the immune system, when they see this molecule, perceived to be under attack or an infection. And we deployed exactly the same kind of weaponry, including the release of zonin, that we will deploy if we are under attack with the enemy. One thing that we have to keep in mind, again, that we fight with this molecule all the time, because again, we perceive it like a bacterium. But we fight with bacteria all the time. Very rarely we lose this battle and we develop infections. By the same token, we fight this, we all with this molecule all the time. Very rarely we lose the battle. And these are the people that have serious disease or other gluten-related disorders. But all this to say that this molecule, like some bacteria, because bacteria do the same, can instruct these you know, cells to release its own and open this drill bridge. Now, Disclaimer, this happens in everybody. As a matter of fact, everybody that eats gluten will have a leaky gut. So you eat gluten, uh, gluten is digested, you know, incompletely. In we release this molecule zonin that will open this gate in between cells, and gluten will come underneath here. Now here, the destiny is different depending on who you are. The vast majority of people will go after gluten, will clean it up, and we will not know that that happened. A very minuscule percentage of individuals will lose this bottle and will develop symptoms and will make these people to develop what, one of the gluten-related disorders that we're going to discuss in the last part of this chat. Now, we are surrounded by bacteria. And we fight against bacteria all the time. Very few of us will lose the bottle and will develop infection and fever and whatever comes with this. Same story with gluten. We all 
are eating gluten, no matter who you are. You live in the North Pole or you live, you know, the Ecuador, the same, that we all are exposed to gluten. We all will engage in this fight, but very few would develop problem with that. So this is an apparent dichotomy because you read out there, Google or books and so on and so forth, that we will be extinct as a species if we don't eliminate gluten from our diet. And this is based on our, you know, discoveries that gluten is toxic for everybody. However, again, very few will lose this balance. This molecule instigates the immune response that is identical to the, the, the one that is instigated when we are exposed to bacteria, because the immune system fights bacteria all the time. We are surrounded, as you see toward the end of the, the, the talk, by bacteria all the time. And every day we fight this neighbor all the time. Because we want to make sure that they stay checked and do not come in our body because otherwise that will be a travesty. But we are not aware of this battle unless we lose it. And that's why we develop infection. Same story here. We fight gluten all the time because it's perceived as a component of a bacterium. We are not aware about this world unless we lose it. And we lose it only if we have the predisposition to develop problem related gluten, namely severe disease with allergy or gluten sensitivity that we're going to discuss toward the end. So that's pretty much the reason why, despite that this is toxic theoretically for everybody, only a few will develop symptoms. So, indeed, everybody got the leaky gut. And every